Welcome to our video on dependent events. In this video, our goals are first to learn to determine when events are dependent on one another, and secondly, we will learn to calculate the conditional probability of dependent events. If the probability of one event depends on the probability of another event, these events are called dependent events. Now, if event B depends on event A occurring, then the probability that both events occur will be shown using the following equation. So this reads as the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by this conditional probability of event B given that event A has occurred. That was all a really big mouthful. Let's try to break this down a little bit further. Let's say that we are selecting two tickets for winners out of some number of tickets that have been sold as a fundraiser. Now, when I select this first ticket to determine the first winner, I'll call this event A. If I do not replace that first ticket back into the bin before I choose the second ticket, I have altered the probability of event B. So in this case, I have decreased the total number of outcomes, which actually increases the probability of winning in event B. Event B is what we describe as being that dependent event. And when I calculate the probability of it, that is conditional probability. Alrighty, let's throw some numbers in there and take a look at our first example. So it reads, Valeria draws a card from a well-shuffled standard deck of 52 playing cards. We're probably becoming quite familiar with the deck of cards by now. Then she draws another card from the deck without replacing the first card. Now that little phrase there is very key. Part A wants to know whether or not these events are dependent or independent. And then part B would like us to determine the probability that both cards are diamonds. Let's tackle the first part, A. These events are certainly dependent on one another. They're similar to that lottery example that we just talked about. Since she does not replace the card, she's altering the total number of cards that are available to pick from the second time around. This means that the probability of drawing a second card depends on the first event occurring. And we know that that's a dependent event. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look at part B. Determine the probability that both cards are diamonds. In other words, we would like to know the probability that a diamond is pulled and a second diamond is pulled. So we'll describe those as being our two events. Recall that when we see that word and, we need to be able to multiply. And we'll see that as we pull up our equation. So recall that our equation is the probability of event A and B, that's what we're looking for, is equal to the probability of A multiplied by that conditional probability of event B. Let's start by calculating the event of probability A. Pulling a diamond from an original deck. So we know there are four suits and that one of those suits is diamonds. There are 13 diamonds out of a total 52 cards. So that means that the probability of pulling a diamond in the first event is 13 out of 52. Now let's take a look at event B. This is the one that's dependent on event A. So when we calculate its conditional probability, we've got to consider what's happened in the first event. Now, we want to pull a second diamond in event B. Now, because we're assuming that we already selected a diamond in the first event, that means that there are only 12 diamonds to choose from in the second event, and we've also decreased the number of total cards to choose from, which is 51. So the probability of event B, given that event A has occurred, is 12 over 51. And we want to know the probability of event A and event B occurring. We're going to multiply these two values together. 
When we do that and then simplify, we end up with 1 over 17. So there's a 1 in 17 chance that both cards that are selected are diamonds. Let's try one more. Example 2 reads, according to a survey, 91% of Canadians own a cell phone. Now, of those people or of those 91% of Canadians who own a cell phone, 42% of them have a smartphone. It says, determine to the nearest percent the probability that any Canadian you met during the month in which the survey was collected would have a smartphone. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that there are many more folks who have uh, smartphones these days, but we'll continue on with the data that's given to us. Let's start by analyzing what we know and what we need to find out and how we're going to tackle solving this problem. We're definitely going to look for keywords. Those are always helpful. So in the first line, it tells us that 91% of Canadians have a cell phone. So let's call that the first event. I'm going to label it as the probability of C is 0.91. Next, it says, of these people, now that's a key phrase, 42% have a smartphone. Now, this means that given that a person has a cell phone, so they've fallen in that 91% of Canadians that have a cell phone, then the probability of them having a smartphone is 42%. So this is a conditional probability. We're going to label this as the probability of S or the probability of a smartphone given that they have a cell phone is 0.42. Okay. So what is this question asking us to find? It would like to know the probability of any Canadian you meet having a smartphone. So we have to read between the lines here. This means that they have a cell phone and that it's a smartphone. So we are looking to calculate the probability of C and S. Okay. So we can pull up our equation that will help us determine the probability of C and S. And then we can fill in what we know. So we know that the probability of having a cell phone is 0.91 and that that conditional probability is 0.42. So when I multiply those together, I get 0.3822. And so we could round that up to being 38% of Canadians um, would have a smartphone. Let's wrap up by doing a quick little summary. In this video, we determined that if the probability of one event depends on the probability of another event, then we describe those events as being dependent. By looking for key phrases, we can better analyze the situations in which dependent events are involved, and that will help us use our new equation to solve problems.